let's talk about that next generation, Mikhail. I know that is it is so important to you, and you mentioned it earlier to to do things like remove the velvet ropes from around cars at Concours and let young children get in and honk the horn. Uh, it, just making it a much more friendly, friendlier attitude um, towards towards these events. And if you go down to Exotics on Broadway, which is of course the day before the Concours d'Elegance at Pebble Beach, you see a lot of young people. There are many folks under age 25 looking at the Paganis or looking at the Koenigseggs. So perhaps all is not lost when it, when we, when it, you know, the subject comes to attracting a younger audience. They're out there, aren't they, Mikhail? They sure are. And we just, we have to create entryways. We have to create as many entryways as you possibly can and entry points, entryways where Younger people can can see great cars. They're not hidden away in garages. They're out being driven. Uh, with people, the owners don't need to be afraid to drive them. I mean, that that was the culture for a long time. But even at Pebble Beach, a couple of decades ago, there were cars dropped off in the trailers right up next to the lawn at Pebble Beach. That was the most those cars were ever driven until they created the tour and kind of forced the owners to go at least 60 miles with the car. So cars need to be driven. They need to be seen on the roads. Uh, Obviously, when it comes to modern supercars, setting aside maybe a Pagani or a Koenigsegg, like you mentioned, but you think of a Lamborghini, you think of a Ferrari, you think of the great Porsches, they're making them in radically greater numbers than they ever were before. I mean, I, I never grew up seeing a Lamborghini ever, and now you, they're pretty frequent if you, if you go to one, a major city someplace, and that's exciting. So we need to, we need to get those things out, and those are, the, those, are those entry points, and, and maybe a, a, a you know, really brightly colored Lamborghini or something like that is not the ultimate in collector car, but if that's what gets somebody in, I'm great by that. And and then if they suddenly realize like, well, I like Lamborghinis. What's this Miura thing? You know, could I ever have a Miura? And then, you know, and then it, or a Countach or something. And it goes on uh, from there. And so it's, it's all, everybody's always not just one thing. They, be, they become something else in the car world. And that's why it was really important for us to do these things. You know, we've been doing youth judging programs at our events uh, for years, we we run about uh, between 75 and 100 of them. COVID was a little strange. Uh, we have a, another program we call a Haggerty Driving Experience, where we teach young people to drive manual transmissions, uh, which is maybe one blocker that we all can join together and help young people um, uh, learn to drive these things. I can tell you if the worst thing that happens is we have to replace a clutch now and then, which seldom happens, even with the, we have a fleet of cars that we train young people to drive in. Um, we, we just have to do it all and we have to put our money where our mouth is and invite them in because if we don't, it's going to feel too exclusive or too expensive or it was not for me or I wasn't treated well when I did show up and uh, we're not going to do that. We're going to make it a, a great place to be because it's a, the car world's a great one and, and why not do it? And soon I'm guessing your messaging that will come forward will also emphasize the demographic uh, that you'd like to preserve or cultivate going forward. Yeah, and I, and I think um, for us, uh, you know, we built the Haggerty Drivers Foundation, and that's really about how we, we keep driving alive. And a lot of those elements of the Drivers Foundation and some of our messaging, our ads, it's always depicting this holistic view of the car world, right? It's no longer just an ad of one singular person working in their garage. It's mom, dad, families. And so I think this is that connective tissue um, that we really believe in. And and we don't have to create this story. I mean, this existed in Nikhil's family. I mean, when they're 13 years old, they got to pick the car to restore with their dad. I mean, how cool is that? So for us, this is all very natural in our DNA. And we have to keep that next generation and that next story alive. And you know what? Kids are fun. When you take them, they're, I mean, it's, it's, if you have kids and you see their eyes light up, you know, that brings joy to you. So it's like, you know, that old saying, you, you see the joy of life through other kids' eyes. And I think that's what, that's what we need to do for the car world. Well, that Chevy video that is going around right now all over the place of the, you know, the, the, the daughter restoring the car uh, for her father because of the memory of, of the mother who had clearly passed away. And it, it's really a, it's kind of a wrenching video, actually. Very, very, yeah, yeah uh, Maybe a touch long uh, too, but that is the story and it's universal. And that's what Chevrolet gets. That's what the best car companies get. And that's what we're going to keep amplifying around the world, but up and down generations. It's not just younger right. generations too, um, but we're, you know, the, the baby boomer generation who is, I was firmly in control of the collector car world while they're, they're now starting to get 
from a population standpoint, crowded out by Gen Xers and millennials and so forth, um, they're going to be around a long time and still driving and collecting cars. So we're, we're here for everybody.